Tonight on the show, the stars of the new movie, The Intern, all about a trendy company that hires an elderly assistant. Hmm. Intern, my wine, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> It, it's, it's not chill. <laughs> but it's good. Thank you very much. Let's have the show! show starring in a new film as an old man out of his depth in a new job hmm does that ever happen in real life <laughs> <laughs> why yes it does new labor leader jeremy corbyn hmm, an old man with a beard i like it <laughs> i do yeah and, uh, well, it's not just policies from 1970s clothes as well stunning <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but after all that scandal about David Cameron and the dead pig, you know that story? <laughs> well, a photograph's emerged of the night Jeremy Corbyn joined the North London Vegan Society. Mmm. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll have music from British country duo The Shires. But first, one of our finest stage actors who became a movie idol as Marvel's villainous Loki. He's now starring in the new gothic horror film Crimson Peak. It is Mr. Tom Hiddleston! <laughs> there he is! Hello! You're very welcome! Hi! Thank, Thank you, you so much. Tom Hiddleston! One of the great actor directors of our time and about to lead a new season of plays at London's Garrick Theatre. He is a true knight of the stage and screen. It's Kenneth Branagh! <laughs> She went from Brokeback Mansion to the Rebel West Prada and won an Oscar for extraordinary performance as Fontaine in Les Miserables. It is Anne Hathaway, everybody! New hit comedy, the intern, he is the raging bull, the deer hunter, the good fellow, the godfather of American cinema. It's a very warm welcome back to Robert De Niro! Oh. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. First time. Yes, sir. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. No, very nice to see you all. And now, uh, I, before I say anything, Robert, is it fashion, cold, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm playing Bernie Madoff, and so I, I have the hat because I've shaved my head in a certain way. Oh, when it's, it's on site. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Just... Oh! <laughs> That's really good. Right? Are the long hairs fake? This is all real. <laughs> That's true, though, isn't it? These, yeah. are, these are real, too. Wow, that's smart. Now, Bob, you sort of link our whole sofa. Everyone's linked to you in various ways. Tom is as simple as you're just an enormous fan, aren't you? I, I am, yes. I should declare it now. <laughs> what's your face? What's your face? <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did you get to say hello? At, at well, I said a quick hello, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it, um... Did a little bit of wee come out? <laughs> <laughs> I managed to keep that together. Well done. Happy uh, so, uh, do you have a favourite film? I, I do have a favourite film, um, which many people probably know is I, I loved Heat. I love yeah. your performance yes. in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and this is truly remarkable for me to be sitting on this sofa with these people who have, who have inspired me from when I was very, very young. Um, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dane and Hathaway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the other connections are more obvious. Obviously, uh, Anne uh, and Bob, you're in a movie, the new movie, The Intern, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I hear, though, you have been spreading misinformation about <laughs> Bob. I'm so sorry about this. Yes, I, I didn't mean to, but I made the world believe that Robert De Niro is a fan of The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> 
turns out uh, it was my mistake. <laughs> and uh, I, he was being sarcastic in an email <laughs> where he was told that we were, uh, a, one of our trailers or something was premiering in front of The Bachelor. And Nancy said, Bob, I know you're such a fan. And Bob said, you bet your ass I'm a fan of The Bachelor. And I was like, this is such good goss. <laughs> <laughs> stupidly told a journalist about it, and now Bob has had to answer non-stop questions for this entire press tour about what a fan of The Bachelor is, what's his favorite season, what did he think of the rose ceremony. <laughs> Have you ever even seen it? No. <laughs> Do you watch any TV or any reality? Not too much, just the news. So if you were in London on a Friday night, if you weren't on this show, would you ever see it? This show I'd watch. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Pizza, pizza. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, the other, the other obvious connection is uh, Kenneth. Of course, you acted and directed with Bob in, uh, yeah. in Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. How long? That's, that's a while ago. Now. Yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah. No, was yeah. that 20 it years is ago? 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, a long time. Wow. Um, and do you direct Bob, or do you just kind of like? What, well, whatever you it fancy. Was <laughs> it was. It, well, no, you don't really. I, we, it was a kind of a conversation, wasn't it? It was a, yeah. a collaboration. It, it did extend a long way through prep. I've never seen anybody, well, apart from this one, uh, be so detailed in terms of uh, <laughs> the preparation. But seriously, in a good way. I mean, just people, people, they, they take their work kind of seriously. Do you remember there was because the the character of the creature was assembled by from lots of other human body parts? Uh, we d you decided, I think, that he would have one leg shorter than the other, and so the process of finding footwear that would allow you to walk in a sort of limping kind of fashion. I remember spending a whole day with you. Walk, you were walking up and down on a sort of catwalk and we were experimenting with like one baseball boot, uh, one roller skate to have a different <laughs> kind of height. And so then you started to do that kind of thing. And then there was like that kind of bouncy thing that you can have. Yeah, that, that, that people you, have. It's yeah. sort of a I see it from time to time in Central yeah. Park. So we, you, I mean, go, we went yeah. through, so, and yeah, there were so many right. various, and then it was like for scene one, I'll have the size eight on the baseball boot, I'll have size ten on the thing, but with the block, and by the end of the day, we had the, there was a grid on the wall with just the different shoe sizes and types of shoes to, to just map out how you might walk for the whole of the movie. The costume department will kind of boss out by the end of the day. <laughs> uh, but it was an example of just, uh, you know, we, that's a bit of a detail that maybe nobody notices, but you have to get to it somehow. And in this case, it was a, a day of incredible footwear choices. And you're not, you're not just directing, you're also in it. And is it yeah. true that the first scene you acted in together was the, the famous birth scene? Uh, yeah, well, it was where the t <laughs> it was where the two characters came together, if you'll pardon the expression. And it was it was inside <laughs> it was inside a, a it was inside a, a, a one ton vat of KY jelly. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was now the, we which can't was, forgive the expression. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, fine. but it was replicating amniotic fluid as if he was he was birthed, and so we had to. You, that's where the body finally emerges, and where we find a way to get to know each other and. We, so we got together <laughs> over a, a whole lot of lube. Well, let's, <laughs> let's, let's remind ourselves, let's remind ourselves of, of the scene. Here it is. Suit that took a lot of time to oh, get man. into. Oh man, do you know what yeah. your call was? That it was yeah. 2 a.m. the previous yeah. the previous night because uh, it was completely sewn in. E everything and everywhere, uh, all openings were uh, attended to. Um, and, and, <laughs> and 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 well, they were. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if, if you're part of the expression, and they were uh, they were sewn or stuck by mm. a group of highly trained operatives uh, who were <laughs> who were prepared to go into those places. And they, <laughs> And they did. You were very patient with that, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> but then your hands must have ended up in some of those places. Slipping well, inside. it does get everywhere when you do that. You've probably found it yourself when, when uh, you know, <laughs> in that kind of situation. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but it's, it's weird you, you talk about it like that because it hasn't really struck me that it's quite. It is quite. It's homoerotic. But yes, it is a little. Yeah. Let, let's just watch it again with that in mind. <laughs>
how we should have done it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Bob and Anne Hathaway's new movie. It's The Intern, and it's a really charming, warm, lovely... It's a comedy, but it's not a romantic comedy, but it's a, it's a comedy... It's a lovely comedy. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know, I, even I almost said romantic comedy, then I read, oh, no, it's not a romantic comedy. No, spoiler alert, we don't hook up in the movie. <laughs> um, not like that, anyway. No. <laughs> story in a way yes. about an unexpected friendship between our characters and it's written directed by uh, Nancy Byers who uh, films like what women want and it's complicated and and in this film so the intro you're the boss mm -hmm. yeah the big tough boss yeah, that's me yeah well actually you're not that tough are you you're quite a nice I'm boss tough when I need to be easy yeah all right <laughs> yeah yeah and then you are the intern yes so you've had a whole life, you retired, and then you decided to go back into the workplace. Yes, I decided to go back, and I saw this, this sort of flyer for uh, interns, um, and they, I think in the, in the flyer explains that older interns, I that's, think? That's correct. And, um, yeah, so then I have, do a video sort of uh, interview describing myself and so on, and that's it. You know, I'm talking about uh, everything that I've missed or well, that I thought I might enjoy uh, as a retiree and also a widower. And then finally, uh, there's not really, there's something missing in my life. And so this seems to be, could potentially be an answer to that, being part of this, this whole thing, this young company. And there it is. And it's fascinating watching you play this part because it, it, Ben, he's got a low status, really, for most yes. of the film. And he is. Well, he's a lovely man. He's just a lovely, lovely man. Yeah. Is that hard to play? Kind of. <laughs> Would I have preferred to beat somebody up or shoot somebody? <laughs> I asked Nancy Myers if I could do that. And I asked Anne. I was I full was, support. You know, I, I, we just, you know, one of the interns. I thought we could have gone kids, on a lamb together. You know, <laughs> but, you know, different kind of movie. Different film. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to Anne, have you been in enough movies now where stepping onto the set with Robert De Niro isn't intimidating? Haven't, no. No, okay. it, 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 <laughs> I, was, I was pretty, pretty nervous before we started this one. But, um, and I don't mean to name drop, but, um, I, you know, Julie Andrews was good prep and, and Meryl yeah. Streep was very, very good prep. And, um, and when I worked with Meryl, I was so awed by her. I was so... Um, just, I couldn't get over it. I was such a fan the entire time. And I feel like I missed out on the experience working with her. Like, you know, I was too scared to talk. I don't know if it was the character, I don't know if it was Meryl, combination of the two. Um, so this time I decided that I wasn't going to let my, my fan worship of Bob stand. This is so awkward talking about this while you're right next to me. <laughs> but um, stand, in, stand in the way of having a great time. So I would like do my freakouts at home and then show up and just be like, hey, we're working together today. What are you doing? Yeah. You're getting a coffee? That's cool. Um, <laughs> it was very cool. And it worked and we had a great time. Uh, let's go to, uh, this is a clip of the, the two of you together in The Intern. This is uh, Robert's character giving out some reassurance before uh, a big meeting. Oh, thanks, but you don't have to, like, open the door. Sure. Okay, so this shouldn't take more than an hour, but if you can't stay here, I'll call Becky, and then she'll find you, and then you can just pull up. Don't worry, I'll be here. I think I've got to eat today. Should I pick you up some sushi? No, I eat too much mercury. I'll be fine, I'm good. I'm actually kind of nauseous, so... Story thespians, especially the two on my left, I have never been more aware of the fact that when I act, I sound like a chipmunk on helium. <laughs> Stop that now, this Stop minute. No, Stop. I will. <laughs> yes. You say so, I will. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, I should say the intern opens tonight all over the country. So don't go see it right now. But uh, <laughs> today? Tonight? Tonight? Saturday? No. no to next <laughs> oh, 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 I got it. Right, right. All right. All right. I was right. acting. I forgot. I forgot. Very good. Oh. Robert De Niro believed me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is weird, I think. I sort of, I, it, can it be true that here you are, Anne Hathaway, Oscar winner, and yet reading about it, you say you auditioned for this film. Yes, yes, I did. Does that, that can't be right. I mean, it, it happened.
happens. So I don't have to do it every time, but you know, sometimes if there's a hesitation in the director's mind, yeah, I got to. Nancy Myers, what is she? But <laughs> <laughs> she's not happy that I'm telling people that I auditioned for it. She's like, no, 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 just say I was. I'm like, Nancy, I had, I'm proud of the fact that I had. This is my third time auditioning for her. Well, you did. She didn't give you things. Three, two other times, yeah. So I was really oh, excited. <laughs> Because I was, I was watching the, the speech you gave, Bob, at the Tisch School of the Arts. You gave a kind of graduation speech. Yes. And in that, you were talking about it, that even you, you know, you got recall of your first, was it Bang the Drum Slowly, your first mm -hmm. kind of big movie? In some ways, yes, yes. But big for you. But, yeah, they, no, they, was, but they, tor was. they tortured you with the number of auditions. Well, I, I auditioned seven times. Um, first for the director, for the first one part. And then the part I finally got later for about two, three times, then four times or so for the second part, for the director, uh, the producer, the producer and his wife. <laughs> it was a whole, a whole thing. Uh, just, but, you know, as an actor, sometimes that, that does happen. And you just got to not take it personally and just keep going. And the speech was great that you gave to the students at Tisch. And the nice people at Tisch have allowed us to show a little, oh, okay. just a, a little clip. So imagine, here you are, you're a young arts graduate, aspiring to a you know, creative life in the arts, and oh my God, here is Robert De Niro. What profound words of encouragement <laughs> will he give us? Here we go. Dean Green, deans, university leadership, faculty, staff, parents, friends, and the 2015 class of New York University's Tisch School of the Arts. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate with you today. Tisch graduates, you made it. And you're fucked. The parents were thinking, but we spent so much on this. <laughs> it's sort of true. It's good that you were telling them. Yeah. 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 Because, because uh, uh, in other words, Tom. Yes. You auditioned for Ken. I, I did many times. Yeah. Um, but particularly, I'm talking about Thor, when uh, you yes, getting Loki, which yeah. kind of changed your life. It did. Yeah. My life has changed thanks to this man. Yes. Yeah. And um, it's a pleasure to be sitting with him on your sofa. Is that where the Hiddlestoners came from, from Loki? I, 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 that's a whole other world I don't know about. <laughs> you um, know all about the Hiddlestoners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, they're very sweet, mostly benign. Um, <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, there's, there, there's a few of them. Um, and then the Hiddlestoners get Hiddle boners. <laughs> I don't know, this all comes from him, not me. I'm not making this. I'm not making this. This is him. I don't know. I, I've never... That's something I've not... I haven't put out... I haven't put that out into... <laughs> <laughs> If you'll pardon the expression, <laughs> I haven't extended that into the. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I, it's a uh, they're, they're they're generally um you know they're generally <laughs> I, I, I find myself lost for words. Okay, with, okay. With, uh, but no, no, but they're years... very they're sweet and benign and they and they're fans and and um and uh, yeah. No, <laughs> you are fabulous as Loki. Absolutely Thank you. Brilliant. But yes. apparently, you originally originally. Audition. No offense is meant by my incredulity here. That's right. But you originally auditioned for Thor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> did you encourage yes, did. him to do that, Ken? Uh, it was a, it was a very uh, sort of um, brilliant kind of uh, pitch for the part. I mean, he came in and, and wowed the room um, with, uh, for, as Loki and, and as Thor. We were we were an emerging and evolving script, so it was always changing. But fair play to Tom. He just uh, went for it. In and, the end, um, Ken, why, why did you go with this, then, in the end? <laughs> <laughs> was was oh, it the longer man. hair? Was it...? <laughs> I think it was the hair. I think it was really the... That's was... my brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Thor. Yeah. Oh, Thor. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is made out of um, um, genetically modified material. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't mind my saying that. Um, he's a sort of... Genetic anomaly, I think. I was very, I was a bit embarrassed when, when, when we came to do the scene in the movie where he takes his shirt off. I just felt a little uncomfortable talking about the, the sort of how, how we would do it. And I felt as though, well, maybe he'll feel that he shouldn't or couldn't or it's a bit whatever. So I said, I remember going to see him that morning saying, look, you know, I, it would be, I think it might be good if you 
get your shirt off, but I, you may be fitting. He said, of course I'm going to get my bloody shirt off, mate. I've been, <laughs> I've been training for nine months for this <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, we must turn to Kenneth Branagh, uh, because you're at the Garrick for a year. For a year, it, yeah. But for a whole year. Yeah. With, uh, is it five plays you're doing? We are, yeah. Which is a huge undertaking. It is, but it's exciting, because we, we have uh, Dame Judi Dench starring in the first one, which is The Winter's Tale. Very good. Yeah. That, yeah. that opens on the 17th of October. It does indeed. That's a very beautiful play about, uh, you know, jealousy and redemption and some sheep shearing as well. Wow. Uh, you can't do a play without sheep shearing. Um, and we also do a couple of plays by, by Terence Rathkin, Zoe Wanamaker's in, in one amazing um, half-hour one-woman show, which is about a, a dangerous woman alone at night with a bottle of whiskey and a bag of secrets. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're going to book that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, she's fantastic. And, uh, and, and we also do just an out-and-out -out comedy in a play called Harlequin, which, which takes the mickey in a sweet way about actors, and it's about a theatre troupe putting on The Winter's Tale and led by a megalomaniac. Um, so we're, we're looking for inspiration for that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, listen, I tell you what, you've put together a really beautiful uh, sort of little teaser of what's in store. Thank you. advantage for you of of doing it for a year, putting it all together. Is it because you have a repertory of, of actors? Yeah, people get to be in more than one play, and I think actors, so for instance, in these first three plays, uh, lots of people are in, in, in two plays, so it's nice to see Zoe Wanamaker be very funny in one and very dramatic in another, I hope, I think. Um, and uh, to see also uh, people like Judy Dench, who I've now worked with for over 30 years, and that kind of um, rapport, that acting rapport, you hope, you know, comes into play, and, 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 and she's a, a master. It's just to see a master at work like that is really an eye-opening thing. Plus, She's a beautiful person. It's a great sort of opportunity to, to be in the, in the presence of somebody great. And, and at 80 years old, to give her in Shakespeare to a, a West End audience, not only in the theatre, but we, we do a cinema broadcast on November the 26th so that people around the world can see it live that night as well. Because when you were doing Renaissance all these years ago, yeah. you got Judy Dench to direct... Yeah. Um, much ado about much nothing. About, much yeah. about yeah. nothing. But, and you imagine that, you know, Kenneth Branagh, very confident, you know, you're putting together these things, but apparently you were incredibly nervous oh, man. asking her. Yeah, I mean, three days. Have you ever done this? I mean, I was a bit like that with you. Three days with Judy of, of planning the phone call, of planning the casual phone call when you ring up, Hi, Judy, so... <clears throat> Hi, Judy, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's Ken here, yeah. Oh, are you... Well, if it's, if it's, and I've written it all down. Oh, are you free? Oh, no, that's fine. Oh, well... I could call again. I've got that. Well, I've got six versions of the phone call there <laughs> in case, I don't know, she's in the kitchen or something. Just <laughs> terrified. Hand, you know, like it was the old days, so the, the, the trembling hands just, uh, uh, you know, using the phone and everything. And, uh, I mean, and then once you get to know people, it's different, but it's amazing. And, like, meeting this, you know, I, well, the first time I literally saw my name next to his on a piece of paper that said we were going to do uh, a piece of work together, I started to cry. It's just, well, because, you know, this guy, we, you know, this is an, another master. This, this is a guy, we kiss the hem of his garment. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a master. It's as simple as that. It's as simple yeah. as that. There you go. And Bob, you, you know, as Tom was saying, you know, I think a lot of young actors, they, you know, they revere you, so they, they look to you. But the other thing you inspire is impressions, people doing impressions. Now, when people do impressions of you, is it like sort of nails on a chalkboard or do you kind of enjoy it? No, I, I kind of enjoy it, especially if they do it well. <laughs> uh, so, no, I, I, it's, it's great. It's, it's, I love it. 
I only ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, because because uh, any Hiddlestoners watching will know, uh, Tom Hiddleston does impression. You do impression of lots of people. So who is in your canon? <laughs> it's a it's a expression of admiration, just to be clear. Um, yeah. So I do I do uh, <laughs> impressions of people that I, I admire and I sort of listen to them. I, I get the first time I did an impression um, that anyone was aware of. I was just telling a story about Midnight in Paris, the Woody Allen film I was in, and how I'd never read the whole script and I, t and I thought it was set in the 20s. And um, I turned up and I bumped into Owen Wilson, who didn't look like he was in the 20s at all. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I said to him, I said, so wait, hang on, who are you playing? Because I'm playing F. Scott Fitzgerald and I know Corey Stoll's playing Ernest Hemingway and we're all playing figures of history. And he went, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm from now. I go back in time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time machine, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of cool, and it's kind of woody, and you just kind of it's kind of awesome. Uh, <laughs> hey, good. But, but uh, I've done I've done I mean I've done I've been made to do impressions of my fellow Avengers. Um, uh, I think everyone does an impression of Christopher Walken because he's <laughs> just he's such an easy kind of. <laughs> you know, I feel like what this show needs is more cowbell. Uh, it depends on what you like me to say. <laughs> Basically, there's no punctuation. <laughs> Anything that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I, like that. I know whole pages of heat. You surprise me. <laughs> So I, there's this there's a scene in the middle of the film which you'll be familiar with. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> the one person you don't need to explain it to. <laughs> so look, there's a, there's a, there's a... <laughs> he, he remembers. You're very good in this. He thing. remembers. <laughs> yeah. There's a scene in the, in the middle of the film which is because uh, because uh, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. Don't worry. <laughs> they're, they're, they're separated like a great thriller. They're separated from for the entire film, and they meet twice: once at the end, and once in the middle. And it takes place at a restaurant in LA. It's a great scene. It's one of the great pieces of screen acting you can hope to watch. There it is. It's, there's a picture of it. It's like a it's a mutual recognition of each other. Anyway, so there's a bit where they have like they sit and have coffee and have tea and talk about stuff. I'm going on. I apologize. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, so Al Pacino at one point. Al, Al Pacino says this. He goes. Uh, so, <laughs> we're sitting here like a couple of regular fellas. I mean, uh, you do what you do, I do what I gotta do. If I'm there <laughs> and I gotta put you away, I won't like it. But if it's between you and some poor bastard whose wife you're gonna turn into a widow, Brother, you are going down. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, and so then, and then it cut, and then Michael Mann cuts back to the esteemed gentleman at the end of the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do got me boxed in? I'm not gonna put you down. We've been face to face. Yeah, but I will not hesitate, not for a second. That's my... Hey. <laughs> this is so, this is so meta. <laughs> I feel like I've gone into a parallel universe where... Um, I, 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 You're I, playing all these parts. Yes, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That, I did the impression that, of Ken Brown. That was my favorite scene. The was movie. it your favorite scene? Yeah. It's a Still. Great... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but my favorite scene that was written before, yeah. not because of our doing it, but I just my favorite scene written in the yeah. film. You know, that, that it's a great piece great. of writing. Yeah, yeah. Great... it feels like it plays in two in two singles in a way. Like yeah, it just, yeah, and it, yeah. And it's it's like a, the most beautiful game of tennis. Did yeah. you each yeah. do lots of takes? Did you do lots of takes? I forget or... how many takes we did. I don't think we did more than five to eight or nine at the yeah. most. Maybe, maybe less. I, yeah. You talk about your dreams and you talk about your life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's so great. It's so great. There's that bit, another bit where you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he says, uh, he says uh, 
Pacino says, so you never wanted a regular type life. <laughs> and and uh, Bob, may I call you Bob? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bob says, um, what's that, barbecues and ball games? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hiddleston's a new film called Crimson Peak. It's out on the 16th of October. And I imagine this movie is like a dream for an actor because it's such a big, gothic melodrama with kind of fights and frights. It's fabulous. Yeah, I mean, it is. It was, for me, it was a chance to work with Guillermo del Toro, who I think is, is a master. Um, and uh, it is a gothic romance. So it's true to gothic romance in that there is a beautiful, radiant, pure hearted heroine played by Mia Vashikovska, who is sensational in it. And she's drawn to the tall, dark stranger with the crumbling mansion on the hill. Um, and it's sort of like um, she's Elizabeth Bennet and I'm Mr. Darcy, but when she gets back to the house, it's full of some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and your uh, sister. And my sister, played by Jessica Chastain, who I know you had on this very sofa last week. Yes, and I, actually, she was walking off the set, and I said to her, oh, I, I saw you in Crimson Peak, and she was, oh, I'm so bad, and I don't know you were going to... No, I play a bad person. <laughs> 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 Lucky I didn't go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Zap you! <laughs> Everyone misses that times, but... Uh... Yeah. Uh, yeah, she, she's really off the deep end in this. Um, <laughs> it's, which, is, which is new for her. She's fantastic in it, too. And, it, and it's... Um, it really is about... Um, it's about these, these polar opposites of, of sex and death, you know, these, these two completely opposite forces in our lives. And, and I read on Usually, as an actor, you, you negotiated, you lobbied for extra nudity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying to sell the film, it's Tom. A... <laughs> <laughs> gothic romance, how are you? About, uh, hello. <laughs> uh, no, they, they, well, you know, gothic romance is, <laughs> it's about sexuality. It's about, it has to be sexy. And uh, there is a, a love scene in the film. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, well, was like, dude, <laughs> it's time to get naked, man. You have to show the world your buns. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was, I, I was happy to, to do it. And it, we discussed it often in these situations. Um, uh, the, the woman is more naked than the man, and we thought we would uh, just redress the balance. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Boners all round. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's watch a clip. This is you returning with your new bride to the family seat. Okay. Grace, we try to maintain the house as best we can, but with the cold and the rain, it's impossible to stop the damp and the erosion. And the mines right below, well, the wood is rotting and the house is sinking. We, we are about to hear our musical act. Graham, do people do impressions of people that do impressions of you? Don't they? Almost. Very rarely. Yeah. Very rare. Yeah. What, what, am I in your canon? No, no, no. I mean, I haven't. It's like I always. I feel like I, I wouldn't be able to do it until I've met you, but I have. Do you want me to do it? Go but you that clearly, you clearly, go, try, go. <laughs> I don't know. So, I, can I have the cards? I need the cards. Okay. <laughs> you can have an oh, old. No, card. don't worry. You can have an old card. I don't need old a card. card. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, go. So, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> So, so you, <laughs> so you, you've never been on the show. I don't know I've ever had. Is that okay? That is okay. Yeah. I, I, I feel your pain, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> first time. There's only a first time for everything. Now, but impressions of a thing that actors do. Kind like, of apparently you do an impression. Uh, I do a bad impre impersonation uh, of Sir Ian McKellen. Um, uh, Ask Gandalf. <laughs> uh, 
You shall not pass. <laughs> when non creme non flem nom and dang dong, you will not pass. <laughs> Wing dong bang dong column and golem. <laughs> you shall definitely not pass. That's about Let's try it again. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think don't he'd be. I think he'd be flattered by I that. Don't, <laughs> I don't do an impression of you, McKellen, but I was in uh, Waitrose, the supermarket here, and uh, they have those self-service uh, checkouts. So I was at the other checkout, and Ian McKellen. I said hello to him earlier. He was wandering around with a basket, and I was chewing. And then just from over in the self-service area, you just heard this booming voice going, "It's in the bag." <laughs> Uh, but, but... This is not a cucumber, it's, <laughs> it's a, a, an aubergine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Anne Hathaway, you also do an impression. I do Britney Spears. No, see, this is an oldie but wow. a goodie. OK. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know <laughs> that something wasn't right here? Oh, baby, baby, <laughs> I shouldn't have let you go. <laughs> now you're out of sight. Time. This group are the first British country band to have an album in the top ten. Performing all over again from their new album, Brave, please welcome the Shires! <laughs> Yeah, the shy is a 
everyone. There you go. Hello, sir. Come and meet everybody. Is it Chris or Chrissy? Chris, Chrissy. Chrissy and Ben. Yep. Chrissy and Ben. That's Chrissy and Ben. Chrissy and Ben from the Shires. Thank you. Robert De Niro? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't fall off. Shut down. Shut down, Tom. <laughs> we don't want to lose you at this stage. Now, um, that is from the new album, uh, Brave, which is out now. Yes. Which has been a big success. Yeah, yeah. it's been, um, it's crazy, isn't it, really? Yeah, the first uh, UK country act ever to go top ten. It sounds 10. so weird uh, that you speak with English accents. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you singing? And, so, in America, people must be so surprised when you talk. Yeah, because we've got British accents and we sing about British things as well, so yeah. But with a country twang. Yeah, we yeah. do. I always do my best, sort of love actually. You know, get to the <laughs> bar and it's like, I'll have a, a pint of beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did you know you could do that kind of, that country twang? Yeah, I mean, I've been singing country music since I was tiny. My gran taught me all the old songs and I just absolutely loved it, so. You okay. can actually do anything with her voice. It's really weird. Ooh, I've right. heard your impressions Yeah, earlier, we heard but... your impressions earlier. Um, yeah. So you can do a kettle. Yeah. I can do a kettle. Do a kettle, but we have got a lot of celebrities, no utensils. Go on, that's a kettle. Good luck with the album and the tour. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Shires. There you go. Just before we go, we've got time for the cue of the big red chair. So who's there? Hello, nice lady. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Lauren. Lauren? Yeah. So uh, off you go with your story. All right, so I'm sorry, but this story is going to put someone on the spot on that stage. Um, I'm one of three girls. About 10 years ago, I was on holiday in Dublin, checking in to in Dublin International Airport. And my 11-year-old sister starts watching someone check in. And she runs up to this person and says, Oh my God, are you Anne Hathaway? And oh. then turns around, whips off her sunglasses and says, hi, you can call me Annie. And then, you know, proceeds to interact and talk to all of us, asking how our holiday is, posing pictures with us. It was so nice and it was so lovely. And that would have been a really great story had it ended there. However, after Anne left, my mother then just started crying hysterically about how nice Anne Hathaway was. <laughs> all through check-in all through security, <laughs> who naturally, none of these people had any context and naturally thought she was batshit crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, for being so lovely and nice and for making my mom cry. That's like a nice story ever. Into the film. It's just like everyone's lovely. It's just like a lovely. <laughs> no, no, that was so nice. My mother cried. Uh, <laughs> mind you, maybe the girls were all just bitches. She's like, why couldn't my daughter's been like her? <laughs> Very good. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go on the show, you can. Just contact us by our website at this very address. A huge thank you to my guests tonight, the Shires, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> Australian Oscar winner Nicole Kidman and global superstar Meryl Streep. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.